wanted to first introduce ourselves. You get to go first. <laughs> I'm Mrs. Henderson. Um, I teach language arts, so I teach reading and writing um, to all your kiddos. Uh, this is my family this summer in Colorado. Uh, my sixth grader probably wouldn't like this picture because he's always like, this is awkward. I'm <laughs> We're not going to tell him. <laughs> I was trying to camouflage myself. Like, so, um, so we had a great time. So. Um, Do you want to tell them about your kids? Who, oh, yeah, your I have Max, who's in 10th grade um, and at the high school, and then Brady is in 6th grade at Eubanks, and then Sophie's in 3rd grade in Miss Andrews' class. And this is my family. This summer we went to Destin with my husband's family, and um, my daughter Brinley's in 3rd grade, and my son Colin is in kindergarten. So I have, I'm really looking forward to this year and next where I have both my kids in the building with me for just those two short years. So we set this year in slow motion, and I told your kids that the first day of school, I am slow motion this year and next. We are going to enjoy every day. I, yeah, this is my last one to come through. So mm -hmm. I'm ready. And, and Max started kindergarten here, so mm -hmm. definitely slow it down. Yeah. And then we also wanted to introduce Tracy Smith, who's part of our old union team, and she's in and out of our classrooms a lot. And I really enjoy supporting the fourth grade team, mostly traveling with the center. Kids, but I have a baby kitty. That, uh, <laughs> <laughs> started off this day by falling in the shower. So, oh. I'm to see yes, I didn't know that. He's very cute. Oh. We should have put a picture. We should have. We should have <laughs> talked to you. Um, because a lot we are a lot of familiar and a lot are new. We are actually going to start out with something a little different that we've never done before, but we're hoping that you'll have as much fun with it as we have had in some staff development trainings. Um, it's called Kahoot, and it's if you could take out your phones or any device, and if you don't have a device with you, you're welcome to come borrow one of my iPads over here. And if you'll just go to Safari and type in um, Kahoot it. I'm sorry, I'm covering it. Kahoot just Kahoot.it. Kahoot dot it. Sorry, thank you. Mm -hmm. Oh. And as you're going there, so Kahoot.it, it's also written on the board behind Ms. Henderson there. I'm going to get us there, too. It'll ask you for a game pin. And if you'll just type in this six-digit code. OK. Is it all right if I start? OK, here we go. OK, so there's eight questions. Are you ready? I'll read them out loud. You're going to be touching your answer on your device based on the answer that appears up here. So should my child bring a snack each day? Yes for red, blue for no. The shoulder dancing problem, I can't stop. <laughs> okay. Yay, everybody, we have an all-stars, awesome! Yes, we have a really late lunch. Fourth grade go doesn't go till 12.45. We snack every day at 10.30 when we switch back to our homeroom. So please, always pack a snack for your child. Ooh, nice. Okay, question two. What should I do if my child forgets their lunch? So red, call their teacher. Blue, drop off table. Yellow, email their teacher. Or green, bring it to their classroom. I'm probably not helping by reading it out loud. If you need to stand up to see better, that's always okay. <laughs> Drop off table is the correct answer. There is no need to let us know. If you just bring it to the um, front office, they will let you through to leave it on the drop off table right outside, and usually one of the secretaries will um, shoot an email to us to let us know. So you don't have to do anything other than bring it, or, they can, or if you already tell them, I'm never going to bring your lunch. If you forget your lunch, you have to buy. That's cool, too. <laughs> it's totally fine with me. But, <laughs> but if they forget it, you don't need to deliver it to the classroom or anything. I should initial their behavior chart every night. Red for true, blue for false. I can't not I can't have to dance. <laughs> Yes? What? Do what? Uh, yeah, we've always done it. Yeah. 
<laughs> um, yes, it's true. Every night it's really helpful, not only because it makes your child open up their, their assignment spiral, which is where they will have their homework written, um, but also you get a chance to celebrate a great day with them. I mean, it's the first thing we do for me when we walk in, kindergarten and third grade do it too. We open it up, first thing, initial, thanks, good job guys. Go down, do your homework or go play, whichever. And then, um, or if something goes wrong, it's a chance for the teacher to communicate that with me. How will I know what my child has for homework each night? Ooh. The teacher will email it to me, red. Blue, the behavior chart will have it written on it. Yellow, it will be written in their assignment spiral in red pen. Per green, the fourth grade website will post it. <laughs> kind of tricky. We'll tell you, though. It's yellow. Yeah. Oh, sorry. <laughs> so many people already knew. <laughs> They're going to write it in red pen every day whenever they have homework. <laughs> okay. Should parents remove any papers or notebooks from their child's binder? Red yes, blue no. From their binder. No is the correct answer. Please, please, please. I know in past years you've been you've wanted to look through or take things out. <laughs> Um, oh, I think it was a delayed print job because Ann came looking for that earlier. Um, if in past years you have gone through tabs or helped them, anything that's ready to be taken out will go home in a graded work folder separately. Um, if it's still in there, it's most likely something we're going to use the next day in class. It's just our storage method where they keep their things. Please, please, please. And if it's looking really messy and you're concerned they're not losing things, just shoot one of us an email and we'll help them organize it rather than, it's really to save you guys, honestly, because kids, the first person they blame is their mother. I don't know why, but they'll be like, my mom took it out or my dad took it out. And we'll be like, no, we told them at curriculum night and I know they wouldn't have done it because we just talked about it. So. No, and then of course it's never, their mother has never taken it out. It's always in the desk or right. somewhere yeah, else, and we help it. finding it. <laughs> but it's for your own protection. <laughs> My child forgot their homework. What should I do? Red, nothing. Blue, drop off table. Yellow, call the teacher. Green, email the teacher. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing. Red's the right answer. Okay, most of us. I do see we have some I We so know you love your child, and we know you want to help your child. We know that. You do not have to bring their homework up to prove that. We know you love their chi your child. <laughs> do nothing. They And honestly, the, the only thing it is, we'll sign their behavior chart, but it's good for them yes. to get a consequence for forgetting. So please don't bail them out. Please don't email us and say, and if you have another, if someone who's not here says, oh, I have their homework, I have to drop it by, say, no, 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 fourth grade said not to <laughs> save them. Because then it puts us in the position of saying, no, please don't. They're not going to learn from that mistake. And the point of making mistakes is to learn from them. And we don't make a huge deal about It's not it. a big it's, deal. It's a binder sign, but we just say, you know, we make mistakes. I forgot this yesterday. It happens all the time. So we don't, unless it's something that's obviously recurring all the time. Yeah. And then you would know about that. Yeah, we do want them to have their actual binder, though. The actual binder, we need it. And so if that's yeah. ever forgotten, we, we will ask and call and say, please bring the binder, because they need that for school. There's stuff in it we need to teach with and they need to learn with. But for homework, you're off the hook. Nothing. You just say, no, I was told. If my child's absent, I should. Red, do nothing. Blue, email their teacher and Catherine Stewart. Yellow, call their teacher. See, you want to dance too, I know. <laughs> We're big dancers. <laughs> We're big dancers. Blue's correct, 100%. We've got some A students. All right, last question. The fourth grade newsletter is published. 
Red Daily, Blue Weekly, Yellow Monthly, Green Quarterly. Yellow Monthly. Okay, in past years, <laughs> wow, well, okay, in past years they have done it weekly. Okay, that, I get a chip. And it, but we're, I know. Okay, yay, good job, you're way ahead. Great, hey, good job though, that's, I'm impressed. Um, it just helps, I mean, it gives you an idea of what's going on, but at the same point, we really want kids and parents to rely on kids writing in their assignments for and knowing what their homework is, knowing when tests are coming up, and if we're giving you too much, they don't need to, you don't need to rely on it, neither do they. They don't see the point in using it if they don't use it. And so um, we do a monthly synopsis of what we're doing in each subject area. It's on the fourth grade website, which I'll show you here in a minute. Um, and you can access it. It'll be up all month, every month. Um, but rely on what's written in their assignment spiral. And if it's really important, not like homework related, but things that we need to communicate with you, we'll send an email as needed. I don't send we an email on a week, like on a specific day, because sometimes a Friday comes, I'm like, I don't know what to tell them. There's not much next week. And then sometimes there's a ton on Monday and then a ton again on Wednesday. So just on an as needed basis, you'll get emails from either one of us or both of us. Right. I, I'm Go ahead. if we should ask if, if anybody, has, has there anybody that's not receiving oh, emails from us? That's a good question. Okay, we need to be sure to get your email address written down then. Okay. Just from your home. Sorry, what? Homeroom mainly. No, just homeroom. If it's something that both need to know, we'll I'll forward it to her. She'll forward it out or vice versa. Mm -hmm. I do have all of your contacts as well. Yeah. And same. I have them. If there's anything math and she's not here, I'll use I might just send it out, but usually we kind of do most everything together. Okay. Oh wait, I forgot to see who the winner was total. Didn't want to. Oh, good job! I am impressed. Nice job. All right. Oh, wait. I'm going to just do this. All right. There we go. All right. And we need to go to the next slide. All right. So your, the best communication tools is your child's assignment spiral. It has your behavior chart in it, their behavior chart in it. And it has their assignments written in it, too, that they'll do daily. If you look and notice, you know they were at school, and you see two or three days, or even hopefully no longer than that, and there's nothing there, please let us know, because if they fall further behind, it only makes it harder for them to go back and correct that error, because we want to reinforce the importance of keeping up with it daily. Um, the constant contact comes from Old Union. So I know I believe most of you have been receiving it, but we're going to probably touch base with just our new families to make sure it's available from the Old Union website, just to click and receive that. Um, and our newsletter on the fourth grade website is, I'll show you where so you'll know where to find it. It's on the Old Union website. You'll go to fourth grade, and then just under news will be our newsletter. And there's September, and it's just two pages as you scroll down. If I can get my 10 to go. And it has um, art, music, and PE schedule on it if you need it. Any important events that are coming up this month. Um, sometimes we'll be able to include flyers, which the PTO event tonight at Pi 5 is also up there. And then our team photo. And then graded work folders. We're still sort of in the habit of sending them on Wednesdays, but sometimes throughout the year, it might be those times where a bunch is piled up by Friday, and we just want to get it to you. And so it may come home on other nights, or there's important notes from the office. Um, sometimes I don't wait till Friday to send those out. Sorry, I'm doing all the talking. No, I guess okay. you don't mind. No, <laughs> okay. My class has been doing a really good job of bringing them back. Me too. Amazing. Very impressive. As, yeah, just They're empty them out and, and send every them back. And they asked, do we get sick or take them? I don't know. Like, they're excited about taking them home. Like, there's nothing in them today. Yeah. Sorry. But, yeah, they've been, been doing a good job. Very just good. Cleaning them out and bringing them back. Yep. And then once again, just don't remove items from their binders. Um, this is, if you have not yet joined OUSPTO, it's an awesome organization that does a lot for our school. So I'd highly encourage you to head over. Especially if you're in my class, because we're in second place. No, I'm in first. Place, so. so if you haven't from my class, go do it. <laughs> <laughs> and then.
And if you have not yet completed the volunteer background check that's mandatory for Carol ISD, please go to the website and if you would like, we can even, we can forward this out as a PDF for anybody who might want this information if you don't get a chance to write it down tonight. But it's just from the southlakecarol.edu website. And in order to even come on a field trip with us, you must have completed the background information. And it does take, I don't know, even a week or two to go through. So it's just best to get it done for the whole year and then not worry about it again. My husband did it the other night already and I was like, Poop, don't have to worry about it, we're done, we're good. Volunteer background check? Oh, I'm not sure. Last year we were able to do it throughout the year. Okay. But I don't know. I don't remember hearing. There, it could be. I don't remember hearing a cutoff. <laughs> Paige. <laughs> okay, so I teach writing. Um, basically, when your child is in my class, we do um, the workshop model, which is based on uh, Lucy Hawkins. Uh, we Several of the teachers, myself included, and Miss Davis, went, got to go to New York and learn from Lucy herself, and we've had training here. And so basically what the workshop model is, is we have a mini lesson, like at the beginning of class, where the kids will come down, we'll discuss some strategy that authors use or writers use, something to help them with their writing. This week specifically, we've started off just with using our five senses, because sometimes it's hard for them just to figure out what they want to write. You know, they can say it in a sentence or two and that's good. And so just trying to add those details, five senses is one strategy we can use. And so we've modeled it with mentor texts and books. And then um, they are now in the process with a partner of creating their own. I gave them a picture and they are um, making a little kind of mini story paragraph about their picture using their five senses. Um, so we'll do that each day. We'll have a mini lesson. They will write every day, pretty much that they're in my class. Um, when they go back to their seats to write, then I kind of go around, and Smith goes around, we conference with them, talk to them, you know, praise them, or give them help if they need it, any questions, or kind of see what they're working on as a writer. So they will be doing lots of writing this year. Um, of course, we also do grammar, the application of skills, and um, we're starting with like sentences and things like that, review things that they already know, but when they apply it in their writing, it doesn't always come through, so. The modes of writing that we will cover this year, um, these are the two that are tested. We're starting with personal narrative, which is basically stories about things that they've done and about their self, their life. And um, so that's what we start with. We um, also work on expository, which is basically where they come up with a statement. It may be something like, um, Florida is the best place to go on a vacation. And then they have to back it up with facts. Like, it's a great place to go because there's beach activity. And then maybe the next paragraph is it's a great place to go because uh, of the weather or the seafood or whatever. So they have to back it up and um, then kind of conclude it. So, And then later on in the year we'll move to persuasive, which it, it's interesting because fourth graders can be very persuasive. <laughs> and so they will pick things like, you know, maybe um, we should get a dog or, uh, you know, more allowance or whatever. Or I should get a phone. So they'll, have, they'll come up with the reasons for that. So. And then we kind of you're, end you're the year. Sharing those ideas with <laughs> <laughs> no, no. We'll let them come with them on their own. <laughs> they, they can come up with them. On their own. They, well. Yeah. I know my children. Um, and then we end the year with a memoir. Um, it's kind of a, it's kind of a sweet memoir. They say goodbye mm -hmm. to elementary school and goodbye to Old Union. And we know not all of them have been here the whole time, but mm -hmm. they will be gone. It is. It is. So hard. I did. I did. Yeah. Next mm -hmm. year I will hate it. Like, mm -hmm. You may not do it next year. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, skip that. Yeah. So, it's really sweet, and they kind of highlight different little memories that they have from the different grades, and then they kind of say goodbye, but hello to you, thanks, and intermediate, and, or wherever it is that they're going. So. And before I change to the next slide, I have to say, because I know, I know I say it every year, I say it every year, so you've heard me say it before a lot of you, but you will be amazed at what your child is able to produce as a writer by the end of fourth grade. Mrs. Henderson is an amazing writing teacher, which is why I can't teach writing. I'll just teach the math stuff and let her handle amazing it with two classes. Teacher. But yeah. amazing. Our well, kids, I read their writing and I'm like, they're very I can't do that. <laughs> they're very eager to learn, which is so nice to be able to teach mm -hmm. kids like that. So. so you'll be impressed. And then reading, um, we will, uh, we kind of follow the reader, we do follow the reading workshop model as well, which is based on kind of the same thing as the writers, where we do many lessons, 
The kids will have time in class pretty much every day where they can choose and read their own independent books. And um, kind of same thing, we conference with them and talk to them about what they're reading and things. Um, we, if we're talking about characters, we might talk to them about how their characters are changing in their book or what they really like about this character or something surprising about what this character did, those kinds of things. Um, so we do the reading workshop. We also have some class novels where at times we'll all be reading the same book. They'll still be able to read their independent books and their choice books in, in a time in class, but we also will do a, a novel together. And we will have activities that go with it. I think that we're going to start with Everest, which they always really love because like on the very first page it says four kids go up, only three go down. And so they're like, what? You know, what's going to happen? So it, it gets them really interested in it. It's a challenging book, but we work on it together. Um, we do lots of kind of background information on Everest and kind of teaching them that so they can understand some of the terms in the book. So we will have those kind of novels. Uh, the 40 book challenge is just something that we do. We challenge them to read 40 books this year. Not all of them will reach it. Some of them will get right at 40. Some of them will get way more than 40. Some of them we will be so thrilled no matter what number they get. We want them to be able to celebrate. Everyone will be celebrated at the end of the year for what they did, whether they reach the goal or not. So um, that's something that we do. They're already very competitive with each other because on the board I keep Henderson and Martins. And so they turn the books into me. I highlight them when they're done, mark them on a chart, and they get to add one up to the board. Your class came in. My today. class was so upset with her class. <laughs> <laughs> That's, you know, because I, I told both classes, you can use the books that you read this summer, as long as you read it this summer, so they were just not happy at all. <laughs> I said, you guys can catch up, you're fine. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Um, and we can, and you can count any books. It can be books that you read with them at home if you're reading a book with them. It can be books they read at home, books they read at school, books that we read at school together. Chapter Even books. the books that I read aloud to them that's just for fun can be used. Yeah, chapter books. Mm -hmm. um, and then... The reading homework's a little bit different. Now, I know third grade has changed up this year, and I didn't have a third grader last year, so I'm not real sure, but basically, your kids have a reading log. They're in their reading folders, and they will write down the date that they start the book, the book, the author, and then the genre, and it, it's all listed on there. They don't, you don't have to write that down every night. They write it down. When they finish it, they put the date that they finish it, they bring it to me, and I highlight it. So we don't have a nightly reading log that you have to keep up with. I know as a parent that was always something, oh, you gotta go fill out your log. So we don't have, they don't have to do that. As long as we know that they're reading about an hour and a half a week. So we trust you, we know that like, and we, tr we tell them it's your responsibility if you've got soccer or football one night and you know I can't read tonight and then maybe you don't let the next night, things like that. We know things like that come up. We, we have kids to Yeah, or get ahead on the weekend. Right. Yeah. So, um, that is something, they're pretty much responsible for that. So if I see, okay, most people are turning in books. I haven't seen this one for six weeks. He hasn't finished, the, I mean, obviously, hopefully it wouldn't be that long before I noticed, but like, two, you know, several weeks I haven't seen him. That then we might have to say, okay, listen, we need to get some things down here. We need to make sure that we're doing our reading just so that we can keep on top of it. Mm -hmm. um, and they record their book titles in reading log. We haven't started Wordly Wise yet this year. The first four weeks in spelling are going to be just the basic sight words. They're the words that um, the state has said fourth graders should know these words. You probably saw that list. There's like 30. We won't normally have 30 words when we do Wordly Wise. They're a lot more challenging. Um, it's a great program for strengthening vocabulary, but there are some really difficult words in the program. So um, there's 15 when we do that, but when that happens, so like four or five weeks from now, I'll send home, I'll send an email about it, we'll send the home the packet, I'll do part of the homework with the kids so they know exactly what to do. Every week that they get Wordly Wise, on Monday they'll get their work and their homework that's with it, and it will, the homework will be due on Thursday and the test will be Friday, so it'll be the same every week. So this is a very routine, they know, they get it Monday, it's due Thursday, test Friday. So, but all of that will be emailed to you and I'll have a letter attached to it just so that, you, so that you're clear on what's expected for that. Um, and just similar to reading, we don't have a math log of minutes per the week, but I do expect kids to still be practicing their facts. And the, so really just a good ballpark would be 30 to 40 minutes is a reasonable amount. Um, we have reflex math. All the kids have logged into it now. We did, we went to the computer lab today. Everybody's just working. Everyone's able to log in. It's a 
easy program for them to just practice their facts, although they don't have to use that. If, they'd re if you'd rather them use worksheets or flashcards, I'm really open to any kind of fact practice. But it is important they still get it in fourth grade because in class we don't do fact practice. We use we apply those facts. So we're doing long division and double digit multiplication. And if they don't know their facts, they begin to really struggle already in fourth grade. So to help your child, the best thing they can do is they just need that fact practice. And Reflex is a program purchased by PTO again that has been good for fact practice for kids. I'm able to log in and see how often they're getting on and how long they're spending on it and seeing which facts that they have accomplished. Um, so instead of doing a math log or anything, I can, I can log in any day I want to double check and if kids haven't logged in that week, I'm able to then have a discussion and say, hey, you know, I don't have a math log, but I could give you one if you need one to be able to get your practice done. And usually like, I don't want a math log. And I'm like, okay, just log in then. Get your work done. So that's all. Um, our textbooks available online. There may be occasional um, times that they'll be asked to watch a video or something ahead of time at home. Um, I don't normally ever give homework like that's due the next day. I'll give two or three nights because I know that we just need that sometimes to get it done. And most how everyone is here is like me. Like Tuesdays and Wednesdays are busy. So if I get it on Monday, then it's due by Thursday, Friday, we're good. Or get it ahead of time, we're good. Um, there are, we are also, uh, Mrs. Arst, Mr. Bishop and I are piloting Canvas for the school district. Um, there's subject areas and grades chosen at each campus. It's a, what's called an LMS, which is a learning management system, which if you have students in high school or college, that's what they use. Um, it's just a way to turn in work or, yeah, turn on work online, basically. Um, I don't, and they'll have, because the kids are under 13, they'll have a, more information that comes home to you and I'll get your signatures before they're on using that. Um, but it's very secure and it's through the school district that we, I can communicate with them and they can communicate with me through this Canvas LMS. Um, we also use Marcy Cook task cards at school. There's, that's not something I'll ever send home. It's something we do in class. Um, sometimes I just pay them tickets for finishing. Sometimes there's a certain set I want them to finish and they, need to be finishing it at school. Um, normally I don't really have it as an assigned must be due anymore. I usually just kind of reward them for working on it because they're working ahead on it. They're awesome. I love the Marcy Cook tax cards. Mm -hmm. um, ThingsThroughMath.com is another website that we were one of the few schools last year from our district that did not use it. And I believe, and it was a website that now they're looking at state funding and how it's doing and I believe the entire district is going to be using it um, coming up this year but I'm waiting to hear more information about it and if we start using it there's a parent letter I know that I'll get you that information if we start using it too. Um, Stumpers is something fun that I do as an extension every day in class. It's probably some of your kids have been really bothered by them mm -hmm. and if they're a child that comes home to talk about school they may have mentioned the stumper. Uh, today's and I posted over here and it's their goal is someone has to find the answer or figure out the answer and bring it to me. And if they don't, that question then goes on my stumped board back at the back of the classroom. It's empty currently because they've been able to solve it each day. My goal is to find a problem that no one can solve and get it up on the stumped board. Their goal is to make sure the stumped board stays empty. Um, and today, two kids were able to solve it, but you'll get a chance, you'll see why, I mean, it's challenging. It says, find three consecutive numbers whose squares, when added together, total a three-digit palindromic number. I won't help them, and it drives them crazy. And I say you can use all your resources. Use the dictionary. You can, you know, get online, go to Google, figure out what those words mean, but I'm not going to help you. I want to stump you, so I'm not going to help you. And, I mean, you can be amazed that some fourth graders, two fourth graders were able to solve that today. And so it's kind of fun. But they do have to have their other normal classwork done, although some kids I know are totally obsessing over that and I'm okay with it because they're thinking about math so that's fine. Um, in social studies I'll be teaching math science and social studies this year. Fourth grade is all about Texas history which is fun and it's about how Texas relates to the United States and the rest of the world. We have had the same textbooks until this year as long as I've taught fourth grade and um, we got new ones and it's the ones were so outdated that I think they were made maybe before internet existed, I don't know. But the ones we have now, they have some really neat um, videos and interactive textbook things online um, that I believe I'll be able to assign through that Canvas LMS for the kids to even, so you may see it at home, you may not. We might just be going to the computer lab, which makes me think. Um, if your child has not 
brought in a set of headphones or earbuds to school yet. We'll keep them in their cubbies, but it's kind of just, I think, become one of those necessities for school supplies from now on for all, not even beyond elementary school too, because yeah, they're creating videos, they're listening to videos. It's just different. And in science, um, we still, in science lab, Ms. Snyder plans on doing a digital science notebook, which I was like, that's awesome. I feel like they need a lot of writing practice still as fourth grade, and we apply that in science. And so they do have a science lab notebook that when we're doing things in my class with science, they'll be keeping up in a notebook. That'll usually stay at school too, but I told them by the, their goal is that it looks like a masterpiece by the end of the year. And to do careful scientific work, observations, you know, do we have to color? Well, a real scientist would want their information as accurate as possible and would color it like what they're observing. So, yeah, let's, yes, get your, get, do it, yes. Um, we'll try to continue to do as many hands-on investigations. We're really lucky that we have Ms. Snyder and our science lab is structured differently than the rest throughout the school district, whereas she pulls all of fourth grade on one day and is not part of the encore rotation. And so that gives us a chance to plan with her during our planning period that day. She knows what we're doing, we know what she's doing, and it's aligned, which is awesome. Um, and I believe we get to have high touch, high tech again this year, which is an amazing, okay, good, take thanks, Susan. Mm -hmm. um, PTO has helped to pay, the programs have brought in high touch, high tech. We love high touch, high tech because they do more in their, what, hour or 90 minutes that they have with the kids than we're able to do. And it's, they're just amazing. And then Miss Snyder's our new science lab. We lost Miss Karis. She is now t really helping teachers from, the, she's working in the administration building and she comes to us on Wednesdays still, but she's our technology specialist for the school district now. Um, the assessments in fourth grade look differently than third grade. And the, we'll be taking the COGAT and ITBS in October. I don't know the specific dates. We will tell you as soon as we have them. Those two tests are used to determine fifth grade math placement, which I know sounds crazy, but they are standardized and they're used at this, all the same kids are tested at the same age, the same. So, and it, it's the district and beyond that decides that. We, I wish we could test at the end of the year based on what I've gotten to teach them all year, but in general they do fall where they belong into their um, fifth grade math classes, usually based on those two assessments. And then in fourth grade we get to take three star tests. Um, the math I know has been pushed into May, which I love because now I have, oh imagine teaching the whole year. <laughs> um, it used to be in April and now it's like mid-May instead. I can't, I don't know this specific date. Um, I'm sure we'll tell you about them later. It's really just, what, three or four days throughout the year. This is not a focus of our curriculum throughout the year. They're there, and our kids should hopefully do really well on them, but it is not a focus for us every day in the classroom. So we don't actually have the specific dates for you yet, but we'll, once we know, we'll get them to you in the second half of the year. And then the fun stuff about fourth grade that all the kids look forward to. And if your child hasn't signed up yet for choir, they may be asking soon, because I believe that deadline's coming yeah, up soon. Okay, yeah, several of mine have too. Um, Mrs. MacArthur has choir just for the fourth graders, and they get to perform in town square at the tree lighting ceremony, and they go on a field trip mm -hmm. and sing at some other retirement centers in April or May. Um, fourth graders get to help participate with the video announcements in the morning. Fourth grade mentors, they get to go down to work with kindergartners. Mrs. Stolly sets that all up and helping kindergarten classrooms. Oh, and first grade, too. Mm -hmm. Kindergarten and first grade classrooms. Um, jogging club generally starts in January in the second half of the school year for third and fourth grade. And then green team Miss Snyder will also be sending out a sign-up to get kids to help with collecting the recycling around the building. Yeah, and mainly we just want fourth grade to be a fun and successful year for your child. Because it's their last year in elementary school and we want to enjoy them while they're here. Uh, and then the last little reminder is if you have it, hey, if you're not home to make dinner, you can stop at five, five for PTO. <laughs> Did anyone have any questions or anything for us? Yes? I missed the website that you suggested they go on. If Reflex Math. And I've, each child has a little quarter size sheet of paper glue sticked into the front of their assignment spiral. And it has the website address, their username, password, login. It's, they, we glued them in, um, I believe, Monday or Tuesday. So they have them. They've all gone online with me today in the computer lab, and they're working. So they should be able to, if you say go to Reflex, they should be able to find it on their own again. 
Yes. And the security check thing, you need to do that every year, correct? The background check is every year. Mm -hmm. That's for the whole school district. So if you once you do it, it's good for all the schools. <laughs> yes. I think Central is which textbook? The, the math one. That's math. I think Central will be for math. So There's so many online, online textbooks, textbook it's crazy. Your grade I think, yes, and I, you know what, hang on, I believe I have the link already on it yeah, from yeah, last you year. Do, you do. Okay, yeah, good, okay, good. Right. Yes, Think Central's the math textbook okay. from last year, and we haven't yet added the social studies and science. My login actually didn't work until yesterday. So I was emailing back and forth with admin going, oh, what? everybody else's is working, so. Once um, we have more, we'll include those links on the website. It's easier for the kids sometimes to just go to the fourth grade website because I just have that even at my house as a favorite where the kids can click on it and then navigate through those links instead of typing everything in. Um, last year on first in math, you had the kids get so many stickers by certain time. Yeah. On reflex math, are you going to do anything that makes them accountable for? Because it's so much easier. I'd like them to do it at least two or totally. I understand completely. Yes. Um, I'm, I think two times a week is really generous of me to say that's not, I prefer them to go on three or four times. If they're not on it two times a week, then I'll be asking them to be going on it or we will be, I, I hate to say study hall, but if we're not doing it at home, I want them to have a reason to want to do it at home. <laughs> so I'll be like, you know what, we haven't gone on. You need to get on tonight and tomorrow night to get your two nights for the week. And if you haven't, then we're going to be in study hall. I can look and honestly, if they've been going on and then miss a week, it, I can see when they were on for the whole month. It's laid out for me. Are you able to see the progress to say, oh, it looks like they've mastered all their facts? I am. Got yes, and the, the cool thing that I wasn't expecting, because last year was the year that we began Reflex Math, and it started everyone back at zero. Well, I didn't realize this, but when the kids logged in, it started them right where they ended last year. I know, and so some of my kids were already showing 100% for their facts, which was fabulous for me to have that information. They can still get on to get that practice, but at least now I kind of know, well, where did they end up last year? And some who haven't been there <coughs> or weren't on it. Or, and I also noticed that I don't know which classes if they were different, but I noticed some had only been assigned multiplication and division up to the number 10, um, and some were up to 12. And so today when the classes were in there, I changed everybody up to 0 through 12 because that's my expectation that I want them to get that practice in. Um, so that was just changed. So if, if your child had been 100 and then it suddenly, they were at 100% fluent and they were like, what, I knew all my facts. It's because I added 11s and 12s and once, so if that helps. But I'll be checking. I'd like for them to be at least two times a week on that. They have to be on it, I think, for like 10 or 15 minutes for it to count as one time. That's what I asked you. So they get the green uh, yeah. light really quick. Green light, oh yeah, green light, they're good. Yeah, green light's great. I told them, if you, today in the lab, I had a couple kids get the green light, and I said, then, it's okay with me if you want to go to any other math practice website you already know, as long as it's appropriate for school, go for it. But you have to have your green light first. So, yeah, I'm fine with other practices, too. Yes? We should be getting things through math also. I'm waiting for that information still from the district. But I believe they're doing a district-wide purchase of it this year. So we should be included in it. I've heard good things about it, yeah. Go ahead. You, what about any of the reading online stuff? Do, do they do any of that? Oh, it's I the, the um, we have, iStations? We have, we have iStation. That yeah, we'll do, do they do, still do that? That will start next week, like their initial assessment, and they'll get their information. I'm not sure if it's the same as it was last year. Well, I guess it would be because it's, I believe it's their S numbers and their name, but they'll get the information where they can log in. We'll do it at school at least once a week, and then if you want to continue to do it, I don't require them to do it at home, but it is something like a computer process. Wasn't there another one too? There used to be Reading Plus. Mm -hmm. um, there might have, I don't know if that I would think be Ms. it. Gibson had one that, that she used. It was, I don't know. Oh, okay. Well, was it Read Naturally or? Oh. oh. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So, um, I know our language science program uses Read Naturally, mm -hmm. um, but I don't think it's anything that they've done for the whole school, mm -hmm. but it is a good program. My mm -hmm. older son used it. Mm -hmm. All right. 